former News of the World reporter and executive, describing how he absolutely loved to give chase to celebrities in cars, in fast cars. He said before Diana died, it was such good fun. He recounted off his own bat a tale of him phoning David Beckham's mobile, apparently with the intention of trying to get into his voice messages, but being foiled by the fact that David Beckham answered the phone. And he was asked what he thought about a very famous News of the World campaign to give people the right to know if paedophiles lived in their area, which led to civil disorder in Portsmouth. This was his response. Um, in a bizarre way, I felt slightly proud that I'd written something that created a riot and got a paediatrician uh, beaten up or whatever was the case due to the... Uh, the pedo aspect of um, what our readers um, latched onto. Um, but in another way, the public was absolutely outraged that for the last 20 years you could have a child rapist living next to a family of four, perving over the fence at, at their children, and them never knowing, and sometimes even letting them babysit, and the, the abuse would carry on. With a note of disbelief in his voice, Lord Justice Leveson read that back to Paul McMullen. Did he really mean that? Well, he said, I might have been joking, but he went on to answer questions, the crucial question, if you like, about who else knew about phone hacking at News of the World, and this was his answer. We did all these things for our editors, for Rebecca Brooks and for Andy Coulson, and, um, I mean, you only have to read Andy Coulson's column in Bazaar, where it, it would just be written, you know, um, Pop Star A is lead, leaving messages on Pop Star B's phone at 2 a.m. in the morning saying, I love you, Should we, shall we meet up for a drink? I mean, it was that blatant and obvious. I don't think anyone realised that anyone was committing a crime at the start. And so my assertion has always been that uh, Andy Coulson brought that practice wholesale with him when he uh, was appointed deputy editor. Now, at one point, Lord Justice Leveson stepped in to just remind him he had no obligation to incriminate himself in his answers, but still, they remain very interesting, very fulsome, and told us much we maybe didn't previously know about his version of how business was done at the News of the World.